the report should not have been, in my view, should not have been released because a lot of the drivers are about efficiency and a lot of them are drivers about costs as a proxy for efficiency, really. So, and that information is entirely absent from that report from a strategic and political perspective. I think it fundamentally undermines their arguments about their proposed solution. Um, the sector is comparable because it's not comparable. So prisons here and prisons in other states are not comparable for a whole series of reasons. When I was looking at the, the cost per prisoner per day in Western Australia and in New South Wales, yes, they are different. Western Australia does cost more per day in accordance with the, um, the information that's been provided by the report, which I can't interrogate because it's not publicly available, which is another problem. I think living in Western Australia costs more, right? So, so there's something about that that is completely unsurprising, but in a public domain, in a public discussion, it's a really, really powerful use of accounting information to promote a view that the sector here is inefficient in comparison to other um, jurisdictions. The cost here, no matter what happens, no matter what the government proposes, proposes is likely to be more. Yeah, the nature of the state, the geographical size of the state, the um, number of Indigenous um, people in incarceration in the state. There's so many things that are different here that m mean that making those crude comparisons are really strategic political comparisons that apply pressure to Western Australia. That probably is quite unreasonable. And as an accountant, I think there's a lot of stuff that we can ask around those um, a, a, a rationale for why then, if you aren't making the claim that this is going to save the state m money, why is it useful to um, reform the sector in the ways that the ERA is proposing? Despite retreating from the claim that competition will definitely reduce the costs of the sector, there still is this strong emphasis on costs per prisoner per day. That is the only real costing data in the document. The proposed solution to the manufactured problems in the sector in WA is a commissioning solution. It's a new code for privatisation. Instead of contracts being made available to tender just to private contractors, the department will now be able to compete. So then that produces a whole series of problems inside the department around conflicts of interest. If you're delivering and competing for tenders, you've got access and privy to certain information. Part of the whole motivation of this inquiry, right, is to give more with less, right, to deliver more with less. Well, if you can't actually provide evidence in the public domain to substantiate that claim, then your claim is rubbish. Yeah, it's ideological, it's political, it's got no grounds in any kind of empirical facts. So I think the retreat from costs, because the data isn't in the department, the department actually doesn't have the data. What we found out in New South Wales is when we asked them for information about how they came up with their costs, they couldn't tell us. Right? So how can they tell us we're inefficient if they actually don't have the data to tell us that they're inefficient? It will cost a lot as a model, right? So to reorient the department in this direction is going to require a massive investment and commitment. Associated with that investment and commitment is risk, right? Risk is often not factored into the public sector's discussions and we need to make an argument that it has to be. So what's the risk of it failing? All of this effort to transition to a commissioning model is likely to affect only one or two prisons in the state. Why do all of this for what seems to be a reasonably small reform outcome?